Coming up tonight on YCN News, medical insurance for New Hampshire residents continues to define itself. The Lake Centipede Yacht Club hosted world-class professional racers this week. And the 5th Annual Experience New Hampshire program took place this week at the Capitol. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Centipede region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening. Welcome to this Friday edition of YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Medical insurance for New Hampshire residents continues to define itself. Beginning in 2015, residents who sign up for health care under the nation's new medical insurance law will have more companies to choose from. It remains to be seen if prices for monthly plans decline as more companies offer programs. The New Hampshire State Insurance Department must approve another state's insurance company from coming in to do business here. Two Massachusetts firms, Harvard Pilgrim Health Plan and Minutemen Health, want to become part of New Hampshire's health insurance exchange. So far, only one medical insurance company offers health plans under the Affordable Care Act's exchange. That company is Anthem, which limited its coverage to certain hospitals, excluding Valley Regional Hospital in Sullivan County. Meanwhile, Assurant Health and Maine Community Health Options also may ask for the right to offer medical insurance to New Hampshire residents, New Hampshire Public Radio reports. If approved by state insurance officials, Maine Community would offer plans to residents in four counties, only Carroll, Coas, Rockingham, and Stratford. It would also expand to all of the state's 10 counties in later years. The Lake Centipede Yacht Club hosted world-class professional racers this week. The 2014 Western Hemisphere Championship drew racers from around the world to this Sullivan County town. The Centipede Starfleet co-hosted the event. The biggest challenge for the boat's crews came from the water itself. Manning a boat through fresh waters poses different sailing needs than when a boat slices through salt water. Race spokesman Terry Fletcher explains why. One of the things that's really truly unique about uh, sailing here in Sunapee is we're in the fresh water. Uh, and as you probably can see behind me is the Mount Sunapee ski area. Uh, and obviously we're in makes, uh, Lake Sunapee, which is drinking water. Uh, and this couldn't be more polar opposite to what about 90% of these guys um, that are sailing and sailing at this level uh, where they sail. We're on fresh water and we have mountains uh, like Mount Sunapee and we have harbors and inlets and whatnot here all of which affect wind direction and change uh, and so it's it's tough uh, and it means you really have to be sharp and on top of your game in order to do well we have the professional sailors and the, the ones that are at the top uh, those guys you know literally are traveling all around the world and they're Olympic level sailors they're world sailors and uh, they're professionals let's be honest with each other uh, on the other hand uh, we definitely have uh, a cr class where we encourage um, people of all uh, sizes and shapes and whatnot to get out there and sail. And literally a third of the people that are here in our field today are perhaps husband and wife teams. Um, we've got um, Arthur, um, who is actually from Russia, and his crew, David Caesar, they've got a 741 for a total of 12 points. And they're sitting in first place and then right behind him is Canadian uh, Brian Kramer and he's got a 535 for a total of 13 points and so we ran three races back to back to back today uh, tomorrow is uh, scheduled to be an equally uh, heavy air day and we'll try and run three again back to back to back and then we'll be right caught up and then we'll have one uh, on Friday and if that's the case we'll have the full seven race series and that's it couldn't ask for more Wednesday marked the best day for the sailing on the lake, with the best conditions, wind speed-wise. To see the results from this week's competition, go to lsyc.net. It was bragging time this week in Washington, D.C. for at least 40 New Hampshire businesses. The 5th Annual Experience New Hampshire program took place this week at the Capitol. We're so excited. The doors have just opened for Experience New Hampshire. We have over 40 businesses represented. We have craft beers from New Hampshire, we have wine, our art association and New Hampshire made products. And then of course we have the Mountain View Grand representing our grand hotels in New Hampshire. We have colleges, the White Mountains, 
Community College and Southern New Hampshire University, the University of New Hampshire. First, our great robotics competition that started in New Hampshire by Dean Kamen. We have the St. Anselm's Institute of Politics, which has wonderful photos of all of the political activities in the state. We also have the New Hampshire Humanities Council, which is here with these great maps of the state showing our cultural heritage. The event allows companies, small and large, from all over New Hampshire to show off their goods and services to public policymakers. These officials determine what items can be exported to what countries, tariffs, and other tax-related issues. The event allows lawmakers to hear directly from small business owners about the needs of local companies competing in a global marketplace. What kind of business support can national leaders offer independent companies? That's one of the questions likely asked this week. Participants included L.A. Burdick handmade chocolates and cheeses from Boggy Meadow Farm, both based in Walpole, Echo Farm puddings of Hinsdale, and the New Hampshire Travel and Tourism Bureau in Concord. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Erin McClory. Fallout from the Great Recession continues. Fallout that New Hampshire Attorney General Joseph Foster is addressing today. Foster leveled the playing field for about 89 New Hampshire former property owners who lost their homes to foreclosure due to the actions of one bank. SunTrust Mortgage Bank must pay $550 million to people in New Hampshire and 48 other states for financial abuse. The money is a settlement reached between the states plus the District of Columbia and the federal government. Several federal agencies also worked out the agreement, including the Departments of Justice, Housing and Urban Development and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. New Hampshire residents affected from improper and deceitful banking practices by SunTrust will be contacted directly, Foster says in a statement. SunTrust is part of a larger agreement reached in 2012 between the federal government and 49 states' attorney generals and the nation's five largest mortgage companies. SunTrust and the other firms were charged by federal and state officials with robo-signing or falsely signing a home buyer's name to a financial commitment and failing to work out a plan to keep homeowners in their homes instead of foreclosing. In Vermont news, Brattleboro is on the search for a new top cop. A group of residents and citizens in this southern Vermont town will help in the search, the Brattleboro Reformer reports today. Known as the Police Chief Search Community Committee, this panel also needs members. Seven applicants will be selected by the town manager. Applicants interested in being on the committee must send a letter explaining why they want to participate and include two questions you would ask the police chief candidate. Letters are due July 9th at 230 Main Street, Suite 208, Brattleboro, Vermont. The zip code is 05301. In related news, Brattleboro also is looking for a new town manager. YCN News will update you on this story next week. It's an American art form, jazz music. Looking for something different to do this weekend? Consider heading to Heartland, Vermont for the third annual Jazz Fest. The program begins at 12.15 p.m. and runs until 8 p.m. Admission is by donation. $10 is su the suggested amount. Head to Foster Meadow Field next to the Town Library. Upwards of 60 musicians are expected to perform. To get to Heartland, take I-91 North, Exit 5. The library is one mile from the exit. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to sports. Thanks, Erin. Tonight will be mostly clear with a low around 44 degrees. Saturday will be sunny with a high near 77. Saturday night will be partly cloudy with calm winds. Sunday will be sunny with a high near 79 degrees. And Sunday night will be mostly clear with a low around 50 degrees. On our northeast map, you can see that we are currently in the clear with some light cloud covering moving over us. In our expanded view, you can see the jet stream spreading out the clouds near the Great Lakes, giving us continued sunny and partly cloudy days. And now let's take a look at our community calendar. Tomorrow in Hartford, Vermont, there will be a Revolutionary War reenactment at Kilowatt Park at 9 a.m. In Putney, Vermont, there will be a Yellow Barn Young Artist Concert at Next Stage at 8 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. And now in sports, we have some New Hampshire Fisher Cats news. Thursday night, the Fisher Cats won the third game of their three-game series with Altoona. The final score was 7-6. The Fisher Cats lost the first game with them 2-4, then won the second game 6-5. Tonight, the Fisher Cats face challenger Trenton at their field. The first pitch will be at 7.05 p.m. They face Trenton also on Saturday and Sunday. We will keep you updated on the Fisher Cats results. <laughs>